Okay, this is uh, part four. Eukaryotic microbes, continue with fungi, look at their habitat, reproduction, economic importance, medical importance. So on slide 15, fungal habitats. Most fungi are terrestrial, that means they live on the land, and they are found in nearly every habitat on Earth. There are fungi that can live in very hot places, there are fungi that can live in very uh, acidic places, there are fungi that can live in very high salt places. So salt, if you recall, the problem with living in high salt environments is osmosis. Osmosis pulling water out of the cells. So just to reiterate the fact that fungi are a, an incredibly diverse uh, group of organisms. There is no one rule that could be applied to all fungi at least in terms of their habitat, you could say all fungi have a cell wall with chitin, all fungi have membranes with ergosterol. Other than that, all bits are off. So some fungi can live only in one specific place. They become adapted say, to living on just one plant. Some fungi can live in all kinds of different places. They're very good at degrading talked about that before. They are the principal decomposers <coughs> along with uh, bacteria. Even plastic may be, well indeed we do know of fungi that can degrade plastic. You may know that we currently have a growing uh, and ever worsening um, situation with uh, waste plastic in the environment. Maybe in the future if we get it right we can imagine a building where you shovel in waste plastic at one end, pass it through these kind of uh, fungal incubators and get out some kind of usable or at least degraded product at the other end. No one has, has uh, yet, as I'm aware of, been able to scale this, um, this uh, plastic eating ability. And indeed, plastic isn't very palatable to fungi, so, but there is hope if we can get the, uh, the science right, we could put fungi to, to work cleaning up our mess. So they can grow in all kinds of places. One thing that's kind of interesting about fungi is that most of them prefer slightly cool conditions. Body temperature is 37 degrees, a human body temperature at least. And that's an interesting idea that the reason why human body temperature is 37 degrees C is because of fungi. So you can imagine a population of uh, proto-humans and all with variation. Some body temperature on the cool side, some body temperature on the high side, within a, a very kind of small range. You can kind of then imagine that the cooler examples suffered from fungal infections more often and therefore the warmer uh, organisms were selected. <clears throat> now there's a downside to being too warm. If you are too hot then you need to eat food all the time to maintain that heat. So there's a uh, there's an article here about the idea that human body temperature is kind of like the Goldilocks effect. Just warm enough so that most fungi can't attack us, but not so hot that we have to spend all day eating. <clears throat> food, um, food destruction is one of the main things that uh, fungi do. And they can eat things that other things can't. For example, pickling food preserves it from most other things, but uh, fungi can get in there and destroy it. Preserving fruits in high concentrations of sugars. It's a very, very uh, drying environment, osmosis once again, but fungi can get in there. Because fungi often prefer, <coughs> sorry, prefer these cooler temperatures, it's fungi that uh, get in your fridge. So you open up your fridge and you see that there's mold, 
growing on your food and you throw it out. Most fungi are aerobic. I, they grow and they use oxygen for their respiration. Some yeast are facultative anaerobes. That means that they can use oxygen if it's available or they can use other processes like fermentation. And indeed, many of the other yeasts that we find valuable, it is the products of fermentation that we uh, particularly prize. Things like um, production of carbon dioxide, making the bubbles that make bread rise, or the production of alcohol from fermentation. So we kind of, uh, again, we use yeast, we keep them in an anaerobic environment, <coughs> cause them to undergo fermentation, and then we benefit from the, uh, the results. Um, there are some obligate anaerobes. These are fungi that can only live when there's no oxygen. Oxygen is very uh, reactive. If it gets into these microbes, it'll kill them. And one place that is, uh, is good for these kind of microbes is in the, the rumen of cows. So cows have, they're not quite stomachs, but they have these digestive chambers. Because their food source is primarily uh, things like grass and things like cellulose, they have a very uh, convoluted, a very slow digestive process because on our own animals and mammals in particular, like cows and humans, we can't get a whole lot of energy out of, uh, well, we can't break down cellulose at all. We set ourselves up with uh, these often mutualistic <coughs> um, symbiosis. So, on to slide 16, fungi reproduction. Fungi uh, use spores. So down here in red, a spore is used to describe any fungal reproductive structure. So a spore is a very general term. Generally, if it is used in reproduction, either asexual or sexual, if it's small, then it's a spore. Fungal spores are indeed very small and they're made in very large amounts. They are so small that they can easily enter the air and be carried around for long distances. <coughs> Our spores are, uh, again, typically a spore is a single cell and typically a spore is able to withstand uh, harsh conditions. So their job is to get from point A to point B land, find a good place to set up and then grow into the next generation. So when you go into a new house, for example, you're thinking you're buying this house. One thing you're thinking about is mold in the walls. And the reason why you're, uh, you're concerned about the mold is because of the spores. Lots and lots of spores being produced by the mold, all those spores entering the air and can be easily breathed in by humans. On to slide 17, the economic importance of fungi. So whilst fungi do a lot of, of bad for us, fungi make us sick, but not many. Uh, fungi destroy our food. See here, uh, they're the greatest spoilers of food, causing us to uh, discard tons and tons of food annually because of destruction by um, fungi. They also impose lots of diseases on crops. But there's also good sides to fungi. Antimicrobial medicines. Penicillin. This is the, uh, that agar plate that uh, Fleming uh, lucked out on. The story is he went on vacation, or he went away for two weeks. When he came back, when he came back, one of his plates had been contaminated with this mold and he saw that around the mold there were no bacteria growing. And he thought, hmm, I wonder why there are no bacteria there. Because the, the, uh, the mold was producing an antimicrobial substance that was later uh, purified as penicillin. <clears throat> we also use uh, fungi for our own purposes, yeast in particular. Yeasts are very important for genetic engineering. Again, we can snip out human genes 
put them into yeast and then we can grow yeast in very large numbers in vats. Then we can uh, harvest the, um, the materials. Human insulin can be grown, uh, produced in yeast. Brewer's yeast, baker's yeast, used in the production of wine, bread and beer. Other uh, forms used in cheese making. So a lot of human food is based upon um, fermentation and yeast are one of the primary sources of that. But again, all the good, but lots and lots of bad too. <coughs> On to slide 18. Medical importance of fungi. So there are not that many things that, uh, not that many fungi that uh, hurt humans, a relatively few number of species. They produce, however, in terms of medical, they produce those antimicrobials. So the net impact is probably positive. Right? They do more good for us than harm. So some common diseases, things like athlete's foot and chalk itch. There are some uh, uh, serious fungal diseases, although rare, uh, cryptococcal meningitis, for example. Fungi are in many ways uh, opportunistic. They can be a lot more serious in immunocompromised patients. So we all have fungal spores and fungus living on us, on us and in us, but uh, they're kind of kept in check by our immune system. But as soon as our immune system wanes, maybe because someone has another disease, or maybe because someone has uh, a condition they're being treated for, maybe it's chemotherapy, causing the immune system to wane, and that's when the, the fungi kind of break out of their cells and they have a field day taking over. Three important ways that fungi can hurt us. We can have hypersensitivity reactions against fungi, allergic reactions. So asthma attacks, Aspergillus fumigatus, their spores can trigger asthma attacks. We can be directly infected by the fungi. And the fungi can grow on and in our body and harm us directly. If we have a fungal infection, we often call it a mycosis. In fact, lots of, uh, of diseases that are fungi-based have the term mycosis. So this is uh, Candida albicans. This is a what we might call uh, a yeast infection. Or intoxication. You may uh, come along in the wood picking fungi. You pick the wrong one lots of very nasty toxins in some fungi and then you ingest the toxins and you are affected from the toxins. So allergic reactions or hypersensitivity reactions, direct infections which cause disease and mycoses or intoxication through ingestion of uh, toxins that the fungi makes. So medical importance of fungi. There are fungal spores everywhere. Fungal spores in the air up to an altitude of seven miles. So lots of them, you can't escape them. Every meter, every cube meter of air contains around 10,000 fungal cells. So some uh, terms and, uh, and, and bits and pieces just to cover before we finish this section. The name of the uh, disease is, or the name of the mycosis, uh, the fungal disease, often after the name of the fungi that causes it. So if you are uh, have a mycosis due to Candida albicans, it's often called uh, something like Candidiasis. Fungi, because of their requirements, not only their temperature requirements, but often they like to live 
in, in moist places. Um, those fungi that invade, such as these skin invading molds, these can be called dermatophytes, derma for the skin. Toxins, things like uh, aflatoxin, produced by uh, Aspergillus species. They can be found in grains, peanuts, and they can be indeed even carcinogenic. There's, an, uh, uh, there's a, uh, an interesting story about uh, um, contaminated rye. So rye is uh, kind of a grain that you can make bread out of. And there is a mold that can live in the rye. Uh, it's known as ergot. And there was a case where perhaps the uh, witchcraft of the late 1600s, the uh, Salem witch trials, for example, could be a result of people having eaten contaminated rye, the ergot in the rye producing hallucinogenic toxins, causing all kinds of strange behavior and giving us a very uh, um, again, strange period of uh, history. We can actually use the ergot and we can purify it. Um, it's a vasoconstrictor and an analgesic. Lastly, uh, species producing toxins. Some of the uh, toxic um, fungi are very, very nasty and can even be fatal. Uh, Amanita species can cause fatal liver damage. One last one I'll mention, mention uh, Cochido. It's another name that I have trouble with. Cochidio idiomycosis, also known as valley fever. This is a disease uh, much like um, earlier. We looked at those uh, dimorphic fungi. Histo, uh, histoplasmosis. Here we have a similar example where spores are found in the soil. Any kind of disturbance in the soil, like wind, will pick up the, the, the dirt and move the spores into the air and then the person will breathe them in and the infection uh, will be then inside the person's body and you'll get all of the, uh, the nasty side effects. So coccidiodomycosis causes things like fatigue and cough and fever shortness of breath, headache, night sweats. And that brings us on to our study guide for this section. Where do we find fungi? Almost everywhere. How do fungi reproduce? They reproduce via spores. And we looked at the different, the four kinds of fungi in the different ways and different places that they make their spores but spores are the kind of universal uh, reproductive structure in fungi. Fungal spores being very important uh, because um, they can be causes of diseases. Economic importance. We use fungi in many ways. We use fungi to help us. We use uh, fungi to make our food. We use fungi to uh, make our medicines, but then on the downside, fungi are the most um, important source of, of food destruction. Medical importance. Well, the ways that fungi help us through penicillin and other um, antimicrobial medications are the ways that fungi can hurt us. Those three different ways, allergic reactions, direct infections causing mycoses, and intoxication through eating the fungal, uh, the fungus and ingesting the toxins. <coughs> fungi are important because they are um, opportunistic. They 
are much more important in someone who has uh, or who, who is immunosuppressed. Uh, how many fungal cells are there in the air? Each square meter contains 10,000 cells. And then here too, just remember some of the important diseases. Things like uh, candiasis, um, that ergot that uh, produced the strange behavior because it produces hallucinogenic toxins. Amanita, a very uh, deadly fungus if you eat it. And cochio idiomycosis, or valley fever, where you inhale spores from the soil and then get sick with all those various symptoms. Okay, that is us done for fungi. Let's move on to briefly look at the algae.